G'day guys, welcome to part three of our lockdown low kick series. Remember, we're just focusing on the, uh, the right leg low kick to the lead leg of the orthodox fighter. Um, just finishing off uh, the series today with a couple of other things that we, we've missed that uh, often you, you don't think of. Um, first thing, and it harks back to our first lesson, is foot placement. What are you going to do uh, immediately after you throw a kick? Are you going to look at getaway? Are you going to look to second phase? Um, are you going to look to reset? So with that in mind, particularly with the Dutch style kick that we've worked on before, so the Dutch style kick coming forward here, I just want you to be aware of a couple of things. So if I'm going to throw that kick here, the Dutch style going up, chopping up on the thigh, which is quick, boom. Depending on where my leg falls, depends or determines what I can do next. If I'm trying to set up a left hook, there, I need to come down and drop the shoulder, all right? And that needs to be part of that big pull, all right? So, if I'm intending to throw the kick and second phase, I need to come back slightly square and I need to load whatever is coming after. Okay, so that goes right back to lesson one, to where are you putting your foot immediately after. So the keys here, I drive up, leg comes down, slightly square in this case. Remembering I'm still in the firing zone, so I need to have my guard high. It's not a big pumping kick. Boom, there. Now I've dropped my shoulder because I'm going to throw the left hook slightly. If you imagine picking up a piece of paper off the ground, uh, thanks to the great Lolo Heimoli for that tip. I've remember it, remembered it ever since I was about 20 years old. Pick up a piece of paper off the ground. I've already loaded the hook, provided I'm holding the telephone, bang. So from there, one, two, four, boom, bang. Okay, so think about that when you're practicing, uh, you know, your, your quick Dutch style kick. What are you throwing after it? Okay, second part of that is if I'm wanting to get away in particular, or just chop at the thigh, uh, maybe to break them down over time. When I throw this, the lead hand, I'm not going to stay in, stay in line. I can come here, boom. Now I've moved out to my right, I chop, boom, and I fall away. Okay, so if we do it from here where you can see a little more, okay, I throw the jab, bang. I set the tone with the jab, bang, bang. Moving outside, remember the thigh's here, so now I can just pretty much football kick right underneath the hamstring, boom, and then I fall away. I fall away to my right. Remembering, left hook is there, okay? Be careful of the counter left hook. If you think of uh, Nathan Corbett, Tyrone Spong in their second fight, uh, Nathan did a lovely combination here, and then Tyrone Spong counter with a big left hook. So you have to be very aware of that. That means this pump can't be too hard. I prefer to keep it very short and lift the shoulder up so it snaps back in. Okay, so for that, that uh, second kick again, I move out, this is up, I fire Dutch style kick and I fall away, which enables me either to, to reset and move, or second phase with a longer shot, okay? So a couple of different variations depending on where your foot lands, is it coming straight back, am I setting up the second phase, or am I stepping out, firing the kick and moving out again, making my opponent turn. Okay, back on the Ernesto Hoost theme. Uh, when you're cramped for cramped for the kicking room, particularly if you're wanting to chip away against a bigger fighter, uh, one uh, particularly effective way of doing this in K1 rules is dropping your weight the same way boom, boom, you do when you're throwing body shots, okay? But instead you drop your weight, drop down, and you come up using the power of your legs to put your opponent off balance. Now, Hoost tended to do it with two hands. I prefer one hand, um, but you experiment with what works. Just remember, if you're using two hands, you're committing yourself, and those hands can be tapped down. So I prefer to come up, one uh, with my body, and then one hand out, low kick, come up here, low kick. But it puts your opponent off balance, and remember, your opponent's gloves are up high and they're off balance, they're very vulnerable for being kicked low. So you can do that one, two, three, drop there using my weight and 
put him off balance or one two same thing weight put him off balance boom notice there i'm using that as a blind as well and firing the kick on the same side okay so something that you need to practice and work on it's uh, it's a lot like going for a double leg um, or going for a rugby tackle even that you need to work out your own timing and it will work on some opponents and not on others so if it's you and you're six foot four and david tour i wouldn't suggest this is a god option or mike or, or a mark hunt rather you know a shorter fighter is probably not going to work against but it definitely is a taller fighter you can get up and under put them off balance chip away at the leg all right and uh just had a momentary lapse uh, it's uh, it's late in the day after all um one other way of getting the kick to the lead leg out of the clinch is often you enter into the clinch someone will put their left hand on your head or your shoulder now if we're knee grappling you can cross face over the top look for a cross face there or use it to move away you do the same thing here hand goes on the shoulder you can put your hand across here push off balance boom. okay again something Houston in particular did very well against bigger guys you form the wall a hand would come across he would do effectively do a cross face over the top of the shoulder and use that as leverage and he'd move out boom fall away okay so those are some quite complex refinements so I'll just go over them very quickly again if you're going to throw the Dutch style kick in your second phase, make sure this hand, leg comes down quickly and you're loading whatever the next shot is. There, load, here. If you're wanting to chip away on the leg and keep moving, change your angle and fall away, meaning your opponent has to turn and follow you. Be aware of the left hook counter in particular. When you throw this shot here, someone will take Come back with the left hook on that side prop form is a big counter so be aware of that coming in getting up and under one two forearms getting up and under the body put them off balance one hand push or two hand and then low kick and finally someone comes in you're in in the clinch hands on top of your head or on your shoulder cross face you notice when a cross face to step out slightly with that push boom chip away with the leg and again fall away so uh, just some variations on what we've done still chipping away at that, that front leg um, try them just remember you don't have to have every technique under the sun to make it work work on some things that work for you in particular